book and by the things of the word that comes outside. Everybody got these little cliches. I see them throwing them on Facebook and Twitter. But when it comes down to you walking, according to what it says in the book of James 2 and 14, it talks about show me a man that says he has faith. When I works, and I show you, man, faith is dead. Well, he's he's speaking really to us, the people who have a doubting faith, that we can speak it real good, that our mouths draw close to God, but our hearts are far from him. Because if we really hear the word of God, we hear with our heart. Now, notice what I'm saying. One in the other hand, you know, a person is said to be weak in faith. You know, his conversation is easily broken. We, 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 we understand that, that a person is deterred and pulled away from what God said is impossible, can be possible. And we understand that even in the word of faith, that the Bible sometimes refers to the inner feeling of the conviction or the conversation in a person. Now, we, we look at Romans 8, and we look at Romans 8 and 1, he talks about, for there's no more condemnation or conviction in those who are in Christ Jesus. Because why? You're walking in purified faith. That you understand there's no antidote in that in that, in that area of, of, of prescription that God has given you that is diluted. It's not generic. God's prescription for you in life is that faith coming by hearing and hearing come by the word of God. And when your conversation is strong in the word of God, you're not so easily broken by outside influence of, or things that come at you. That the word of God won't have to come at you, as he said in Matthew 14 and 31. So he said to them, oh, you of little faith, why do you doubt? Well, you can't doubt. When you're walking in the area of, of faith, because now you done gave yourself over to Christ that he says over in the book of Romans 10, 8, 9, that I beseech you that brother, not by beseech you that brother, but he says over in Romans 10, 8, 10, 8, 9, that, 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 that whereas the word is near you, it's in your mouth. Now you convicting your own self. Meaning you actually saying, I'm believing you, Lord, that you you died and your father raised you from the dead and I shall be saved. Now that's the words that come up out of your mouth because the confession comes to you. He said, what does the word say? It's near you. It's right up off in your mouth. Let me tell you something, ladies and gentlemen. The most powerful thing that you have on your body that gives you promotion and demotion is your mouth. The Bible said life and death is right up in it. That thing that sets between your nose and your chin has got the ability to demote you or promote you. It all depends on how you use it. And you get well-formed information from the area in which you're in. Now, we got to really understand what we're saying here because we're going somewhere with this. And we want you to know that in the, your spiritual hearing comes from the word of God. It, 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 that it's an action word. He said, you got to be able to visit and understand that in the revelatory or revelation of God, that God is giving you the ability to move beyond extraordinary measures. Am I somewhere with somebody? That even when faith, the word God says faith coming by hearing, what is impossible in your life becomes possible by the hearing and believing and acting on that what God has declared according to the word of God. It's in the Bible. You know, it's in the Bible. Even when Peter was so powerfully drawn through the spirit that even when people in the book of Acts were brought on couches and cots, that the power of God said, even if the cloth that they used from the power of, of, of Peter will lay upon them and they will be healed. The same thing we use today. The cloth said you can heal, but he didn't ask you to use it for a peddling purpose. Am I somewhere? That you don't take the word of God and the things that he designed for the kingdom of God, which is freely given, freely received, and you start selling people anointing cloths. You know, but if you use the cloth in such a way that it's freely given, that through the power in which you ministered over that cloth, during the course of the time you was ministering the word of God, and then you lay that cloth on that particular person, whatever it may be, then the word of God says signs, wonders, and miracles that will happen. Now, I ain't just making this up. It's in the word. If you read, if you know your word, that ain't that just making it up. That's in the Bible. That the Bible says signs, wonders, and miracles are follow those who believe that even when Peter walked through the streets and they brought people out on cops, that was the faith that they had, that what they heard the word of God was able to perform in what it said it's going to do. Now, I'm going to take you somewhere, and I'm going to show you something here. Uh, I'm going to move around here a little bit, and I'm going to get this word really into your spirit to get you to see something, that how rebellion plays a big part in the kingdom of God, for you're not receiving the promotions that God has in store for you. Now, the word of God declares, and we spoke about this over in Romans 10. He said how Israel had really just missed their blessings by their disobedience. How they just really, how they just really withered away. Then when you look at Romans 10, he said, my brother, when Paul spoke to the Romans over in the book of Rome, over the Romans, he said, now, brother, my hearts and desires are fun. He said over in the, now we're going to look at the, the new, let's just look at it from the, the John B. Phillips new translation. 
And let's look at what it says over here in the first four verses. Peter, I mean, Paul says it like this. He said, my brother, from the bottom of my heart, I long and I pray to God that Israel may be saved. Now, that's saying some clout. That's saying for me and you. That even though we may not be the chose, first chosen, which is of the which is of the Jews, but God has now cut a place for us that He's going to provoke them for jealousy because of their disobedience. Their disobedience. Now, notice what Paul says over in the J.B. Phillips translation. He said, "Brother, from the bottom of my heart, I long and pray that God of Israel may be that you may be saved, for I know from experience what a passion for God that we have." But ah, it is not passion based on knowledge. Notice what he's saying. That they do not know God's righteousness. And all the time, they are going about trying to prove their own righteousness. They have the wrong attitude and receive the wrong things in their mind from him. Now, the J.B. Phillips says like this. For they have wrong attitude and receive his in other words, you come into what you believe. You do opposite of Proverbs 3 and 5 says. You don't want to lean what Christ tells you to lean to. You want to lean to what you feel is right. And going about trying to prove their own righteousness and having an attitude to receive his righteousness. For God means the end of struggles for righteousness is by the law. For anyone who believes in him, notice what he's saying. Now, let's take it over a little step. Let's do something different. Let's look at a different translation. I want to bring this to you. As we're going to flip pages here. We're going to go back over here. And we're going to look at what it says right here in this same particular Romans 10. And we're going to look at it in a different version. And we want you to see some things here. Um, as I get to with you guys, I'm going to flip some pages here. You might hear me turn it through some pages here. We're going to look at this. Now, this is what he says. Now, look at this in the in the NIV translation about Israel. He said, brother, my heart and desires and prayers to God for Israel. Now, those who said that they might be saved. Israel is a nation. Notice that. You know, but it's people, despite of the history, they'd lost a lot of their area of, of, of belief in who and they was chosen from. Now, it goes on in the second verse of the new translation. For the brethren, their record that they have a zeal for God. Now, he said they have a record they have a zeal for God. Like the word of God said, they, they mouths draw forth, but their spirits are far away because they're easily broken. You know, the word of God talks about in Ecclesiastes how three, four coal is not e- a three, four coil is not easily broken. Now, notice how he said this. For they, for, for they bear them record that they have a zeal for God. Notice what he's saying. You know, for, 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 for they have an attitude as if it looks as if it's a form of godliness, but they did not a power which is able to do. He goes on in Romans 10 and 3. He said, for they've been ignorant of God's righteousness. And the Bible said they're going about establishing their own righteousness. Now, let me give you some information about that, that part right there about going about your own way. God's righteousness is the written word of God that defines through what we seek in Romans 10 and 17, that faith coming by hearing and hearing come by the word of God. When you're outside the word of God, you ain't got to worry about what faith come from because it ain't going to even be in your area because you are a doubting person from the beginning, from the time that you even looked on the word, that you can read it good, but your lips from the oratorical form, but your actions are diluted. They, 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 they're actually moving away from what God has declared and designed for you to be. And he told you, according to the word of God in the book of Genesis, that he's given you dominion. He comes back in the Old Testament to tell you the power is within you. Romans 10 and 17 gives you the ability to speak and declare and decree and says that you got the power to call things to be not through the word. Now, let me let me let me pull that back and bring it back to you. Ephesians 4 and 17 says you got the power to be able to call things in existence that be not through if they were. That even in the midst of where you are and it don't seem like things are moving right for you. God said the ability is already in you. That he's given you the divine healing, the divine power to speak and declare and decree to call things that be not. That even when it seems like you're in a disappointing position and it don't seem like things are working out for you. God said, just keep on hammering out in due season. I'll bring you who I want you to be. 
It's amazing when God's word begins to transform and translate that even when we take that very same word over in Ephesians 4 and 17, we look at it in the Amplified Version, and he says a very strong word even in the Amplified part. But so then he said, I solemnly testified in the name of the Lord as a presence, as in his presence, that you must no longer live as a heathen or as a Gentile. And it says that in due, in due possessiveness of the fullness of the folliness of, the, of, of, of your denying and not understanding the word of God. This is in a different translation it's called the GBN translation. It tells you that when your mind is not filtered through the Holy Spirit, you don't have the ability to speak a call for anything because your mind has now been reprobated. It's been conformed out of the will of God. and It's been turned over to things that God never told a call of you to be. Let, let me show you something here. As we go over to the book of, uh, over the book of here, over the book of, uh, let me want to take you here to, uh, let's go back over to, um, Let's stay with here for a second. I just I want to jump on something, but the Lord put in my spirit right quick. But I want to understand that 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 when we look at the book of Ephesians, uh, we, we're gonna go ahead and jump to it. Let's look at Ephesians. But now we're standing Romans t uh, ten and seventeen. But one of I want to evaluate something that how the power that God has given you is in your mouth. That 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 when the word say faith coming by hearing. And hear and come by the word of God. What you speak and declare and decree over your life has got the ability to come to full fruition. Because now there's no more doubt. Because God said, according to Romans, uh, uh, excuse me, uh, Luke 10 and 19, I have given you power. What kind of power God has given you? The trade upon every serpent and every demon and over all the power of the enemy. This is what God has given you. But he said, according to his word, that he's renewed you according to your belief that the things you used to testify against that you thought not was able to happen God said now it's possible for it to happen because of your belief because now you're hearing the word of God that faith coming by hearing and hearing come by the word of God you have been given the ability now to call things that be not though if they were the Bible say who he's quickened even in the midst of where you are God said your mouth has got the power to speak and declare and decree things and call things out of existence into existence. That even when you look at the book of Hebrews, over in Hebrews 11, he said, for faith is a substance of things. Hope for the evidence of things. I can't see it. But if I take the word of God and believe that what I can't see has got the power to come to full fruition, then I'm walking in the commands of what he said in Romans 10 and 17. Because I heard the word, because I heard, because I heard it, now I'm walking in it. So it comes as an action word by hearing. Hearing, for, first of all, by the action of what it comes into. When the word comes to you, it's how you filter through the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit says that he's given you the ability to maneuver in errors that seems impossible. All you got to do is go over the book of 1 Corinthians and see what power God has given you. 1 Corinthians, matter of fact, 1 Corinthians 2 and 9, he's gave you the ability to understand and realize that in your life, that your eyes have not seen and ears not heard. What is he saying? He's giving you the same translation he said in the book of Hebrews. I, I can't see it, but I got to believe faith is evidence. The evidence is though that even though I believe in faith, that even though I don't see it in the physical form, God has promised me. And he said his word won't go back. But he promised me that it will come to full form. But I got to get myself together and believe that even when I hear the faith of the word of God, that which is the scripture says, that if it happened in the scriptures, then it can happen for me. That even when I don't see it, am I talking to somebody? You got to believe and declare and decree that in your life, that what you speak and if it's in the word, it got the ability to come for to, to full form. It's got the ability, it's got the ability to do all that it said it's gonna do. But it's according to your faith. Where is your faith? The Bible says faith coming by. It coming by what? It coming by hearing. And hearing come by the word of God. Now, now when we look at intel, when we look at the four three of the points of hearing, we will look at some of the three components that I say of actually just hearing the word of God through the form of and what you are now intellectually hearing based on knowledge is a requirement of having faith now now if, if, if we think it then we got to believe it's got to come to form but it's got to be through the law of faith which is through the law of god that know that you can't think of things negative and ask god to be able to promote that 
Now, through your intellectualism, some people are too smart for their own good, and they try to outthink everything. And that's one of the reasons they're still sitting in the pews, because they can't get before the people, because you got to have a passion to do the work of Christ. It's not a beat you down with the scripture, beat you down with the Bible word. You got to be able to feed the sheep. The Bible says, the shepherd, the sheep, which is among you. You got to have a compassion for the people.